Today, I'm gonna to be running you through how to do comparables for any property purchase so you can ensure that you know what the end value of the property you're purchasing is and what its true value is and whether you are paying the right price for it so you can invest with more confidence. So let's look at an example property so I can run you through these steps in order to do the comparables and I'll be summarizing those steps um, at the end. So we're looking at um, this property in Redcar. It's already sold but I'm just using it as an illustration because it's a, a really good example. So this is a property that was on for auction. As you can see, it was on for 50,000 pounds. And if we have a look at the condition, we can see that it's in fairly good condition, maybe a little bit worn down in places. I would note that it's got a metal winding staircase, which is likely not to regulations. I can also see that it is being made open plan. So it's not in that bad bad condition. Bathroom looks fairly new, to be honest. And big garden, not in a brilliant state, but just needs a little bit of love on that, particularly the fences need replacing. But not the worst property you'll ever see, but it's on for £50,000. And we know that because it's an auction, it's likely to be worth much more than that. So when we now need to ascertain, well, what is it actually worth? So looking for other elements as well that we can factor into our price estimate. So we can can see that it's three bedroom property. We can see that it's got two reception rooms, but they've just knocked through a wall here and made it open plan, as I've already mentioned. Helpfully, there is square meterages already on the floor plan. It says 97 square meters, but I'm, I'm gonna check that as well, because one of the first steps you need to do when you're checking out comparable properties is to ensure that you're comparing like for like properties. And what do I mean by that? Well, I mean that essentially you're comparing end terrace with an end terrace and you are comparing the same size property so we want to be comparing this to a three bed property we also want to be comparing it to a similar size property in terms of its square meterage so one way of looking at the square meterage in case it's not on the floor plan is to look at the EPC so go to the government's EPC page put in the postcode helpfully this has also got the number on it so we find number 10 this has been done quite recently and it's 90 square meters the floor plan says it's 97 square meters so we usually go off the epc because agent generates these floor plans and normally we find the epc to be more accurate so let's start our kind of analysis on this just one thing to note as well even though it kind of looks like an end terrace because you can't really see it it's actually according to the listing a semi-detached so we will be looking for other semi-detached so the first thing i'm going to do is look for like for like properties so I'm going to go to right move sold prices here and we can see that there is a property sold in 2022 for 147 so that's property on the same street and this is a three bed semi detached we know that was sold just over a year ago number eight so ours is number 10 so it's essentially one of the next door properties we know it's a three bed and we're going to look at its condition because as part of the like for like we want to be comparing like for like condition so we when we're looking at true value we are talking about what is that property worth after you've done a refurb what is the ceiling price what is the highest price on the street using those comparables that we think we could get to the property if it was in really good condition so we need to ascertain what condition the comparables are in as well well. So this property is kind of, I would say it's average, good to average condition. And in fact, it's probably not too dissimilar of condition to ours. In fact, our property has actually got a better bathroom than that. But we know that this sold for 147. We can see that it's got slightly different layout. It's also three bedrooms. It has got a loft room, which means that when they say it's loft room, it means that they potentially have not got regulations or they're unsure whether it's got regulations. So it's unclear whether this is actually a three bed or four bed but when we're uncertain about loft conversions we just normally discount them and just say this is a three bed what i also want to do is just look at the epc as well to look at the floor plan so we know this was number eight so we're looking at epc here this is 70 square five square meters so ours was 90 so our property is actually bigger than this one and this one sold for 147 so based on the initial kind of look 
look of this one property on the same street. It's a very good comparable because we know that is 100 grand more than our property at the moment. We know that ours is bigger according to the EPC. Again, this is the same as attached, so we're comparing like for like. We know this is a strong comparable as well because it's been within the last 12 months. It's also very close by to our property, so we know it's a really strong comparable. So I was just looking at the street here to see where this property actually is. Here is the comparable property that we're looking at. And then here is the property that we are looking at, which is this one, as you can see, and that's the garage for the comparable. So we know that essentially the next door property has sold for 147. So that is a fairly strong indication that actually our property is worth at least 147, but it's very similar condition. And the next door one is actually smaller. So we could even say that essentially our property is worth more. However, the rule of comparables and the rule that a valuer would follow is that you have three comparables. So we've got one, which is a really strong one, but we now need to find more. So we will do the same process as we just did. So I'm going to look for other comparables in the area. What I also want to be doing is looking at the kind of street value. Now, this is an exceptional one because obviously we found a, a comparable which is next door within the last sort of 12 months. So we know that there is a high sort of precedent and value on the street. However, you will get some streets that you look at and some properties that you look at where the street value is lower than the surrounding streets. And it's very easy to actually get confused that your street is worth the same as the higher value streets surrounding and what you want to be doing there is actually looking at the ceiling price on your road and ensuring that you're looking at a like-for-like -like street and not comparing a street which is a richer street and you are on the poorer street and you're comparing a rich versus poor so do look out for that this property here is the next door property or sorry it's a property down the same street again there's no photos there's no information about that we know it's a semi-detached but 115 even though it's a property which is sold more recently than our comparable it's obviously for a, lo a lot less amount and so when there's no pictures it normally means that it's in a kind of bad state of repair and we can also see there that it's 56 square meters so it's going to be a lot smaller that's nearly half of what our property is so I'm going to discount that as a comparable because we know we want to be comparing like for like what else can we see this is on the same street this is a bungalow i can see that from the look of it bungalows are often more pricey because they're in short supply so we always know that when demand is above supply and prices increase and this is the case for bungalows so i'm not going to compare that because we know that that is a not a like for like however it does give an indication of the higher value on the street so i'm going to start to look at this one because we know that i'm looking in this area and for the recent sold property this is from February 2022. So that is kind of like 18 months ago by the time when I'm looking at it. So it is outside of our window for properties and for comparables, but we do know it's the next street along. So it does provide a useful guide. We can see that it's sold for 178. We can see it's a semi-detached three bedroom property. It looks bigger because it's got this and ours hasn't got that. So I think this is going to be bigger. And let's look at the condition. The condition is probably slightly better than ours it's not still not like really really high end it's nice but it's not going to be completely high end however we can see this extension on the side which is means that this property is definitely going to be bigger by at least probably 15 square meters so that probably works out in terms of its value normally roughly in the northeast um, a bedroom the difference between a bedroom is twenty thousand pounds this has got the same number Number of bedrooms but it's probably bigger to the equivalent of at least one bedroom and it's got an extra toilet so all of that kind of equates to that additional value i am going to just look at the square meterage here number seven yeah 104 square meters so that's 14 square meters bigger than ours so we need to be looking at similar size properties we can sort of use that as a guide it's it's bigger than our property it's outside of the 12 months that we're looking at in terms of comparables so i'm not going to 
going to use that at the moment. However, I have found a, another one here, which is Victoria Avenue, which is, let's have a look how close it is. Because all these are strong comparables because they're in the vicinity. Now, our, we're looking at St. John's Grove. This was the last comparable we looked at, and this is the next one along. So we know that it's very close by. We can see that it's a two strong comparables, actually, because one's in 2021, and then one's in 2023. So that shows that there's some good strength in the area that hasn't gone down. Um, it's actually gone up by quite a lot. And we can see it's very similar property. It's a semi-detached. It has a yard next to it. And this one does look like it's been modernized. And that would make sense because of the uplift in value seen over those two years. It's got uh, French doors, kind of a modern kitchen, downstairs toilet. So it looks like they've done a full refurb on this. New bathroom and really nice looking garden and decking. It looks slightly bigger because again, it's got a slight extension on the back there so i think this is bigger than ours so i will check that out in terms of comparable so as a reminder ours was 90 square meters and this is number four victoria so that's 20 square meters bigger which is the size of that extension likely so all of this feeds in to our comparables because even though this is bigger because it's in the last 12 months a valuer would probably look at this and they would look at the other one that we've got which is the number number three the next door one and essentially take a view that based on those two you could comfortably say that this is worth at least 150,000 because this one or sold for 147 and it's the same ours is bigger than that and then you've got one which sold two streets away for 180 but is bigger so the difference in the sizes you've got one at 147 and one at 180 so they may take a, a view of, of it being in the middle of that however our comparable next door is out of the 12 month window so and I've only got two comparables so I do need to see what other comparables we're going to do so I'm going to have to go deeper into to right move because at the moment I'm only looking at this area only so I'm going to be looking at other comparables in the further away as well what I've also got is this one so I've got number 14 on the same street which is a detached property. So again, it's not like for like, but it does look like, I mean, it's weird because the downstairs looks like it's been refurbed and then it looks like half of it hasn't been refurbed because that kitchen's way old. They've just put new carpets in there. Lounge is way dated in terms of its carpets um, and in terms of the fire and stuff, but that's on them. That's sold for 170, but it is a detached property. So that is a higher value than our semi-detached. However, it is on the, the same street. So again, another kind of of guide but a valuer wouldn't use that because it's not within the 12 month window so still need to find another comparable so let's go a bit deeper so i'm looking for something in the last 12 months that's like for like within this quarter of a mile and i've looked at this one that's outside of the 12 months i've looked at this one that is one of our comparables we've discounted that and again that's our main kind of comparable but again outside of the 12 months so there's nothing else beyond the ones we've looked at already past 2022 so i'm gonna to have to go wider because this is what a value would do they they look at the levels so they look at close proximity and then they go further out and then they will look at time as well some valuers will look at six months only and then they will go 12 months and if they can't find anything with 12 months they will go further out this area i know is the values are really varied and it's again similar to what i said before is that you don't want to be comparing a nice street to a low value street so for example fitzwilliam street you can see that it sold for 90,000 back in 2007, but it's going to be a lower value street compared to our street. So I'm not going to look at any comparables there. I've got a three bedroom semi on Borough Road. So I need to see where Borough Road is. I can also look at Greenlands Road, which is 234. So obviously these are way higher than ours, but they could be good comparables. So it's just about looking at each of these individually and doing the same level of analysis that we've already done. So firstly, we need to understand where is this street compared to ours so ours is up here and this one is down here so very very close so this could be a good comparable so 
We can see it sold for in October 2023, so that's hit the 12 months. We know it's the three bed. What kind of condition is it in? Right, there's no photos, which doesn't help, but I'm guessing from the fact that it's sold for 240, and you can see that one sold here for 195, and that's an, on the next door, that this one is going to be in good condition, even though we've not got any photos. So it's difficult when you've not got any photos because you have to make some assumptions, and really it's, it's difficult to use it as a comparable without any with any photos, but given the price, we know it's gonna be higher value rather than lower value. So this is massive, it's 155 square meters, which again would probably equate for the fact that it's nearly 100,000 pounds more than our comparables. So it's 50 square meters bigger than our comparables and 60 square meters bigger than our property. So it's a useful comparable in some ways, but it's a, probably a bit too big because it's, it's, it's not really like for like. So I'm gonna have to go back and see what other comparables we can find. Okay, so then it goes a quarter of a mile. Now I imagine this Greenlands Road will be the same, as in, is it likely to be bigger? But there's lots of stuff that's sold in the area. I'm gonna look at this Greenlands Road because this is actually closer to our comparables in terms of price, which means that it might be closer in terms of size. And you can see that this is around the corner, even though it's not a direct access to it. It's pretty much our pro property is here and this comparable is here. You can see that it sold for 175 in 2023. It's a semi-detached and it's a three bedroom property, but we can see like average bath uh, kitchen. It's got a, a lean-to conservatory, which looks not in great condition. Lounge is okay. Again, it's a sort of average condition property. It's not like high, high end. Even that is pretty nice. Probably the nicest thing in the property. Nice garden. And that sold for 175. Is it the same size? And what I haven't seen is anything that's really high end. So if you made the, this property really high end, it could be that you exceed the sort of comparable price that we're, we're looking at at the moment. So, but we always want to be conservative on our valuations. If all of the comparables are average and your numbers work at, on that average comparable, that's fine. That's, that's, you want to be cautious when you're doing comparables. You don't want to be over optimistic. So this is 96 square meters. So this is a really good comparable because it's the same size. Um, it's a three bedroom property around same area and it's sold within the last 12 months. So that means we have this comparable from July 2023. We have Victoria Avenue from March 2023. And then we have one that's outside of the 12 months, but is the property next door. So I'm fairly confident based on these comparables that this property is conservatively worth probably one, 160, I would say, potentially more, but we've not got any other evidence of being worth more than 160 of in terms of its condition. So I, again, I'm wanting to be conservative. So I'm gonna say it's worth 160 because we've got lots of data from around the area of similar sized properties that are like for like and that are good to average condition that are sold in that 12 month window for around 150 to 180. So in the middle and being conservative, I think our property is worth 160 and just so you can go back and look at this property now you've seen all those others this was in auction for 50,000 I know that this is already sold this actually sold for a hundred thousand pounds so it's a good deal unfortunately it wasn't for us but it is a good deal because it doesn't need that much work doing to it I think this staircase does need sorting out but essentially you've got a property there for purchase for a hundred and it's probably worth 160 170 as I've already said so there we go that's how you do comparable analysis on a property and it is about following those same steps that I just went through on any property and following that process and you can value like any surveyor would do. So just to go through those steps and just to summarize what they were. So firstly, you need to ensure that you've got three comparables which are like for like. So when I say like for like, it needs to be on a similar value street. The property needs to be the same size. So make sure you're looking at the EPC sizes and the property needs to be the 
same in type. So you need to be comparing a semi-detached with a semi-detached or a flat with a flat, for example. You need to ensure that the property data that you're looking at and the comparables are sold within the last 12 months. And you also need to ensure that the property is within a quarter of a mile. If you can't find anything within a quarter of a mile, do go further out. However, your comparables are worse the further you go out because you're not comparing like for like. So make sure you have at least one property in the quarter of a mile radius to be sure. And also make sure that you've got historical evidence on the same street of that street value and you're not comparing a rich street with a poor street. You need to compare like for like value streets. So make sure you're looking at historical data and you've got an understanding of what the high precedent ceiling price is on that road. And that's how you do comparable analysis and following those steps will put you in a good place to work out the true value of that property and what it should sell for if you put it on the open market and what a value would value it at. Of course, you can also go and corroborate all of that data with an agent as well, but you can only use that with a pinch of salt because a valuer will always look at the data and the actual sold data rather than listening to agents. So if you wanna go out to talk to agents, that's fine, but make sure you follow the steps that I've just run through to get that accurate picture. Thanks for watching another video. Really appreciate your support and all of the feedback that you give to this channel. And if I could ask an additional favor, could you subscribe to the channel? Because we want to get more content out. So the more subscriptions we get, the more we know that this content is valued and the more we'll keep doing it. So thanks very much.